All right, hello everybody out there. I hope that you can hear me okay. It's Alex. Uh, for you guys who have been here since 10 o'clock with us, you know that I am the second guest. <laughs> so it's been really fun so far to see uh, Kayla and Lauren talk about the ambassadors, talk about the drawing as it's happening, share some fun stories and stuff. And I'm really excited to step in and be a part of it today. So because you guys are so amazing, you helped us reach our first donation goal to draw one of those first round of animals. And then you hit the goal to bring me in. So what I'll do now, Kayla has stepped away for a moment. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and publish our second poll. So this is the who will Kayla draw next poll. So I'm putting it online on the moderated discussion right now. So you should have seen it posted at 11.05. So remember that these animals that we are giving you guys options from are education ambassadors. They are animals that live with us at the Wildlife Center. We in the outreach staff work with them every single day, almost every single day. We're there feeding them, cleaning their enclosures, and that's just kind of the regular care. We also train them to go out to educational programs, both at the center and off in the world at schools and libraries and public events and of course as you guys have figured out over the past few months online we do a lot of programs with these ambassadors virtually so these three options on this poll buddy verlin and lewis and clark these are ambassadors that i work with as their primary trainer or their primary handler each day and the idea is that with these options whatever you guys choose from the voting I'll be able to follow along with Kayla as she draws and kind of provide some cool insight and some cool stories and fun facts about these ambassadors along the way. So I see that, uh, let's see if we can see any results if people have voted already. I'm scrolling down. Oh yeah, ooh, so far the results are kind of interesting. So I see that Verlin, has no votes, which to be honest, I kind of expected since you guys chose Edie, those are both American Kestrels. Buddy is a fan favorite for many people that visit our moderated discussion, many people that visit our social media sites. Lewis and Clark are so far ahead in a landslide, but we still have some votes coming in. And let's see, I posted that at 11.05. So originally we said, we were gonna leave these polls up for five minutes. So that means that you've got, according to my watch, ooh, three or four minutes left. And I'm, I'm reading the chat along as well, and I see that some people are campaigning for Lewis and Clark, our Virginia opossums. Some people are doing some good um, rallying for their preferred animals. Oh, I'm and I'm so, very excited for this, Alex. Oh, okay, Kayla's back. Hi, I'm Kayla. here. So, I know I heard you and Lauren chit chatting about, you know, your um, guesses or or preferences on who would come in first. And I'll second what Lauren said. You know, we we don't have favorites. There there are coworkers, these ambassadors. We love them and we respect them all. But I'm going to break tradition and say I'm really hoping Lewis and Clark win this round. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I think that they are, they're, they're just, they're so cool. And if anybody knows me, and if you've seen me do presentations in an educational setting, or even just on the chat, if you've talked to me about opossums, you know that I love them. And one of the reasons I like them so much is because honestly, they're kind of a new animal for me. And this is gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a confession. Before I started working at the Wildlife Center, which was like four, three and a half or four years ago, I didn't know anything about opossums. I can't even recall if I had ever seen one in the wild or not. And so when I came to the center and learned about these awesome animals, I just fell in love with them. Yeah, they're wonderful. They are truly wonderful. Uh, what is it about Lewis and Clark that, is there something special about them that you that is different from any that you've worked in, in within the past, or how do you? Yeah, feel? sure. So, so opossums, in terms of their their natural lifespans, are pretty short. They're they're just a short lived animal in the wild. 
it, not even taking into consideration the dangers that they face, like predators or, or cars or whatever else, even without all those hardships. An opossum will live in the wild for like two or three years at the wildlife center with the best possible care that any wild animal could get anywhere. Even our education of opossums here, they typically don't live much longer than three years. So that means that they, they the, the roster of our education of opossums changes pretty frequently. Like for example, uh, let's go, okay, so Gus, our education barred owl, she's been an ambassador for 24 years. Our opossums typically are ambassadors for two years, two and a half years. So we see the, the lineup of our, our education of opossums change pretty frequently. So, you know, I've been here for, let's just call it four years even. I've seen a handful of opossums come and go. These guys stick out to me compared to the rest for a few different reasons. Uh, one thing I like about them a lot is that like all of our other education ambassadors, they are native to Virginia. They were born within the state of Virginia. Unlike a lot of our other ambassadors, they're locals. They're hyper local to the wildlife center because they were actually rescued from Fishersville, which is about 10 minutes, maybe less, down the road from the Wildlife Center. So they're, for, they're a hometown, they're hometown heroes compared to other ambassadors. That's what I like about them. Um, what I also like about them is their, their brothers. Lewis and Clark were, were raised uh, in the same litter. They had the same mom. Um, sadly, their, their mother was hit and killed by a car. That's, that's how they ended up at the Wildlife Center but they came as a pair. They are education ambassadors as a pair. So it was kind of interesting during their early lives to see them, you know, of course, draw a lot of comfort from one another's presence, but as they got a little older, you can kind of see their personalities come out a little bit. And they were sending <laughs> very clear signals at one point of like, okay, I need my own room. So they lived together for a little bit, but eventually, they, we split them up to live in different enclosures. So so kind of the reasons, just to recap why I like Lewis and Clark so much on a personal level is because they're local and because they have a personality that I've been able to see kind of grow and change during their time here at the center. That's wonderful. Well, our five minutes is up and it does look to me that Lewis and Clark swept this poll. They absolutely did. So I just ended the poll. Lewis and Clark... Holy moly, had a lot of 89%. Wow. So you guys sent a clear message that opossums are awesome. This is a, a day of un, of the underdogs. It really is. All right. Let's see. It's going to be interesting for me to figure out. Or to, like, I have to figure out how to fit them both in here because I want to start with one. Um, oh my so gosh. While, while you're getting set up and while you're doing some beginning sketches and mm -hmm. stuff. I guess we should talk about where we're at with our donation goals. Yes. So, yeah, so remember that throughout the day, um, we are offering people on the moderate discussion, people who are watching on our social media channels, um, the chance to see you draw more and more animals based on milestones and goals that we hit for our donations. So this, this drawing session with the opossums is kind of like the second goal, or, or rather the, the, the second reward that we've hit for donation goals. So what is our next donation goal that we can be thinking about during this drawing session? Well, let me see. Let's say, I, it looks like Randy's updating me that the next goal, sorry for the mistake earlier, the, the next goal is 1750. And right now we're pretty close to that. I think we can make it. 1750. So for you guys who I see right now on the chat, we've got about 73 people watching. And that number has held pretty steady. But if you've, if you, if you've jumped in since we started at 10 and you're wondering what these donations go to, this, this, this is money, these are donations and funds that go directly to caring for the thousands of patients that, that will admit just this year alone. So uh, typically in an average year, the Wildlife Center will admit 3,000 or more patients to our hospital. Those include animals that are big, like black bears, bald eagles, great horned owls. Those also include animals that are 
tiny, some of the smallest you would find outside, like little toads and frogs, baby bunnies, baby squirrels. These donations directly go to providing food and shelter and medical supplies and equipment for these animals in need. So today, I mean, it's such a cool, cool opportunity because Kayla, you're so talented. You're such a great illustrator. Well, thanks. It's wonderful that we can bring your skills in to celebrate art and to celebrate wildlife. Well, thank you. Um, and it did occur to me um, what I'm drawing. I'm using reference. If anybody wants to use the same reference I'm using, I'm using Lewis and Clark's photos under the Education Ambassador page on our website. So Ooh. if you want to use the same reference that I'm using, I'm just kind of like drawing both of them and maybe kind of overlapping them a little because their pictures are separate on our website and it also has separate information for each of them um but if you want to use the same one that i'm using you can go to the education ambassador section which is under education and outreach on our website and you can see the photos i'm using and use the same ones yeah that's a that's a good idea having a something to reference i think is really helpful when you're sketching yeah i think if i tried to draw an opossum for memory it would I, I think I could do it, but it might not be totally accurate. <laughs> I think if I tried to do that, it would look more cartoonish than anything else. Yes, exactly. Like, it's hard to do something that's realistic if you're kind of doing it from memory. I envy the people who can. It's it's not me. <laughs> so, so as we're, I was just thinking how this is, Amanda mentioned in the chat, it is like a two for one, right? With, the, with Lewis and Clark. I think a lot of times when we speak about these opossums, we speak about them as a package deal, Lewis and Clark, mm -hmm. because they are, because they're brothers. Um, but something that I think is kind of interesting and, and kind of a good little fun fact to know about them is how we tell the difference between the two. Because sometimes opossums have physical characteristics that make them pretty easy to tell apart from other individuals um, other times they can look really, really similar. And that's almost the case with Lewis and Clark. So the way that I tell the difference between these two brothers, one is that Clark is smaller than Lewis. I don't know if that had something to do with their circumstances as infants, if one got more food or nutrition than the other, but Clark, even to this day, they're, they're about a year old to this day, Clark is smaller than Lewis. So that's one way to tell. Another good way to tell based on their physical traits is that Lewis has one big black patch of skin, uh, a marking on the base of his tail. The rest of his tail is like a pinkish color. Clark, his tail is solid pink. So if you're looking at him from behind, that's a good way to tell, but also kind of from their personalities. Lewis in the beginning, was a little more outgoing. He was a little more comfortable with being handled. Clark was a little more skittish. He seemed to want to hang out in the corner a little bit more, take the side seat. Uh, but interestingly, during the past couple months, I've seen those personalities kind of flip flop. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Yeah, so Clark now seems to be more, more interested in what's going on. Like when we go up to feed our education opossums. They live in outdoor enclosures. They hear, I, I'm, I know that they hear our footsteps coming up the steps and they certainly have associated that sound with, with food, like food's coming, hooray. So Clark, almost every time when he hears your footsteps, he's already at the door. He's ready for that meal. Lewis spends more time in his box. He kind of eats his food at his own pace. So kind of interesting because that those roles, they have flip-flopped since I've known them. Yeah, I remember uh, when when they were little, and that was a good way to tell them apart was the personality. So that's interesting. Yes, and, and one of, another one of my really, really most favorite things about working with these education opossums is that the way we prepare them to do education programs, the way we prepare them to be comfortable in front of people is a little different compared to the education raptors. And it's mainly done for these opossums through habituation, which kind of in layman's terms means that we just get to hang out with them for a whole bunch when they're really little. So these guys, they both lived, though they spent most of their time in a crate under my desk when they were in their training and assessment period. And so we had lots of opportunities 
to meet new people during daily rounds. Those are daily meetings where the whole staff, we get together with the veterinary, the rehab department, um, some of the admin administrative staff with the front desk. We all get together. We talk about what's going on with patients that day, any notable announcements, things that we need to know. That's a great chance to practice for a baby opossum. So I would get to go to rounds and during those, well, we'll say 30 or 45 minute periods, I'd get to hold a little opossum in my arm one at a time and give them something really delicious to snack on because that kind of helps them to associate being in front of people with something good. Food, food is really good. So it's, it would not be uncommon during a time when we're training up a baby opossum for rounds to be interrupted by extremely noisy crunching. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I always felt a little bit self-conscious because I knew that that was really distracting people from paying attention. Cause but you... also I could see people like smiling and laughing. <laughs> so it's not all bad. It's a joy. It's just like, it's like eating a crunchy taco in the, like in front of people. It's very embarrassing. It is. So they don't get tacos though. They right, get... right, right, right. <laughs> Sadly. Yeah. Sadly. <laughs> um, they, well, they're omnivores. So they get a, a pretty, actually a pretty wide variety of food each day. Um, some vegetables, some leafy greens, uh, maybe some fruit diced up and some wet dog food or wet cat food. And that's all mixed in the same bowl. And then to top it all off, the, the Sunday, or sorry, the, the, the cherry on top, so to speak, is, is usually half of a hard boiled egg or one dead mouse or one dead chick. Delicious. So the eggshell is very crunchy, but also, this is kind of gross, the mice and the chicks are also pretty crunchy, those bones. Makes sense. Yeah, maybe not what you want to picture. Maybe not that appetizing, you know, before lunchtime. That's a pretty good meal. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, I am drawing, or trying to draw, uh, a little nose, a little opossum nose, and their noses are different. Like, is there any, like, how well can they smell? How does that work for them? Yeah, so, so that's a great question. So typically, generally, when it comes to mammals, the longer their snout, the better sense of smell they have. That's a generalization. Interesting. Um, but you can think about, so like bears, right? Bears have a really good sense of smell, a fantastic sense of smell. And that's in part due to the length of their snout and then the specialized cells and structures within their snout. They, they have more so they can smell more. And that's true for opossums as well. So they are um, usually seen by humans in the wild at nighttime because they are, of course, nocturnal animals. So they are the most active after the sun goes down, they're looking for food, they're perhaps during mating season looking for a member of the opposite sex. And while they're out there, you know, in the dark of night, you'd think that they would have really great night vision. Well, they actually don't. They can see okay in nighttime, they can see some colors, not as many as we can, but far and away, the most important sense for an opossum is their sense of smell. And those little noses are constantly going if you is <laughs> sometimes during virtual programs um, or during videos we might we might post on social media if the opossum sees the camera they'll go up to it and because they're curious they'll start sniffing away and it's just like a dog that's really interested in something so it's certainly that long snout gives them a better sense of smell and i can also see on your sketch you're giving them lots of whiskers they do and that's yeah. really yeah that's really accurate too because they they rely not on not only on their sense of smell, um, but certainly on their sense of touch from those whiskers to find food, find things in the wild. Plus it makes them really cute. It's very cute. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I like about them, I, I just like opossums. I like the way they look. I like the way they act. Uh, one of my favorite features about them is their, their little hands. So they've got opposable thumbs. So you can always see them like grabbing onto a bit of food or something but I particularly like the, the coloration of their skin and fur. So their little toes are solid pink. And then they, they're kind of the back of their hands, I guess I would call it, and kind of their wrists 
are covered in black skin and black fur. So it almost looks like they're wearing fingerless gloves. I was about to say it's like they're wearing little fingerless gloves. They're little it's very bandit fashionable. hands. It's very fashionable. High fashion coming from Lewis and Clark. We could all take some notes from these two guys. Keep in, keep keep those wrists warm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's actually important. So they are they're native to um, all all up and down the east coast of North America. Um, and they're found uh, west as well, kind of towards the Mississippi River. But compared to other animals, they're not very, I guess, mobile is the word I would use. So if you think about the, the dead of winter, right, cold and snowy here in Virginia, right, temperatures can get to zero degrees or lower. If you're an animal that can move long distances really easily, you're probably going to migrate. You're probably going to go somewhere warmer. So like birds migrate. Some mammals like bears will spend the winter, instead of trying to tough it out in that cold environment, they'll go into a hibernation-like state called brumation. But opossums don't do either of those things. They don't hibernate, they don't brumate, and they don't migrate. That means that they're, they're sticking around, even when it's the coldest cold. Granted, they might be a little less active, but they need really dense fur to stay warm and tough out those temperatures. So fingerless gloves, keep them warm while ensuring they have good dexterity to grab on all those little food bits. Ooh, that's important for the food bits. I see a, a question from Marley in the chat that I just pushed through. Does Lewis or Clark, do they have any interesting food habits compared to Bo or Posey? So Bo and Posey, those, those were former education opossums who sadly passed away within the last year. Or Bo, yeah, was Bo last year? It's tough to remember. Yes, that sounds right. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Marley says she remembers Bo was always ready to have his pick and Posey would pick something off and run off to a corner of the, the corner of the um, enclosure. And, and yes, I see those same traits in both Lewis and Clark. So Clark, will as soon as you set the food down he's ready he grabs what is on top that's usually the egg the, the mouse or the chick he'll grab it in his hands stuff it halfway in his mouth and scurry off to a corner to eat it in peace which is kind of funny to think about because i i have never taken food away from him he's never had someone take away his food after it was given to him so i don't really know why he thinks he needs to do that <laughs> But it makes him happy, so whatever. And then Lewis is much more like Bo, where it will, Lewis will just kind of sit at the food bowl, take a seat, eat the whole thing right there. Interesting. Everybody has their preferences. That's true. Some people don't like, uh, you know, people or opossums maybe just don't want to be watched while they eat. Fair. I understand. If... Um, if I had an audience watching me eat half a hard boiled egg, I would probably be the same way. Yeah. And they're not eating. And yeah, yeah, that would be very uncomfortable. I'm not, I'm not about that. I will say though, that, um, that can be kind of charming for audiences to see. So sometimes when opossums are, are still kind of in training, if we're going out to a school or a library or someplace else, um, I'll bring a little bit of food with me so they can eat while they're being held in front of the crowd. because that helps them be a little bit distracted, keeps them occupied. And also, again, it's really, it's really good reinforcement. Um, sometimes I don't think carefully enough about what food I'm gonna bring. So if I was smart, I would bring something like, ooh, maybe some bits of banana or apples. I would bring apples, because that is not as messy. Uh, if I'm not thinking clearly, I'll bring a half a hard boiled egg. And then when I'm finished with the program, I spend five minutes picking up eggshells. From oh, the wow. Yeah. Yeah. But well, like I said, that's pretty endearing. I think people like to watch that. The the crunch. I'm they love the down. crunch. I'm just trying to capture this 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 mouth from, from this um, angle. It's a very interesting angle that we choose. They look adorable so far. I love it already. Oh man, I hope I hope people are drawing along with this because this is this is a challenge. There's a lot of there's two of them. There's a lot of fur. 
there there's some interesting angles taken in these photos. I would love to see if someone stepped up to this drawing challenge of Me Lewis and Clark. Me too. I saw at least one photo um, of Evie <gasps> that someone drew, yes. and it was awesome. It was so good. And a lot of people, I, I hope we see some drawings on the chat because Lewis and Clark won by a landslide. So I hope that people were excited to give it a shot. Yeah, that, I, what a day. What a day. Amazing. <laughs> Incredible. They just pulled through. So I wonder where we are with our donation goals. Um, I'm checking my email to see if we have any updates. I know it's been a little bit since we heard, so maybe we'll give it some more time and see. Yeah, we'll give it some more time. Um, but we want to keep those donations going because you want to talk about what our goal is today, what we're trying trying to make happen. Yeah, absolutely. So the these donations, um, just like any time you donate to the Wildlife Center, a, a huge amount of help is given to the patients that we care for. Um, we also try and strive really hard to make each donation special and each donation count towards something that it can be used for in the immediate future. So today, these donation dollars um, aren't just going to the regular and routine care of patients, but our ultimate goal, and I'm unsure if this has been um, spoken about yet during our streams, but I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna kick down the door and say it. So our ultimate goal through these donation dollars is to help provide funding to install um, a, a, a critter cam in the bear yards, an additional critter cam. So, Right now, you guys that are on the chat, you guys that are familiar with our website, you know that we have more than a dozen cameras placed throughout the wildlife center. Some are inside in the clinic. That's where we watch things like hospital cam and surgeries. Some of them are uh, placed outdoors in enclosures where patients are like flight pens. And one of the most popular channels are uh, is the, the cameras where we stream footage of the black bears. So those would be for cubs in large mammal isolation, but for the yearlings, we have a, a extensive outdoor enclosure we refer to as the bear yards. And so if you watched Amanda's stream earlier this week, you got a little first person view of those enclosures. So this year, because we have a lot of bear cubs, that means that when they transition to those outdoor bear yards, there's gonna be a lot of bears outside. Right now, we have one camera that is streaming footage of those bear yards. Our goal with these donation dollars is to help provide funding to install an additional camera because we'll need to split up these bear cubs when they transition outside into two separate bear yards. So really what we wanna do is give you guys, the viewers, the donation dollar givers, the supporters, our friends, we wanna give you guys the best possible views of both bear yards. So that's kind of our goal. I think that's, a, I think that's an obtainable goal and it's a very interesting one because we know we love to watch those cubs. They're very endearing. Uh, they are very endearing, and I know that lots of people who are supporters of the, the Wildlife Center, I think one of the things that keeps people around as, well, really as our family, after they hit that donation button, is that we, we treat them like our family, and we kind of make the relationship special because we want people to know what's happening behind our doors especially when it comes to the bear cubs and the bear yearlings, because unfortunately, while we do provide some opportunities for tour groups to come through, no tour group, no education program, nobody 
is allowed to see the bears in person unless they're providing care for them. So one of the ways that we can kind of open that door for people in a virtual sense is through these critter cams. And I know that people who watch these bear cams get so excited. They love to hear the stories, the updates, and it's kind of like kind of a group effort because we're all watching, we're paying attention, and ultimately that makes it easier for the veterinarians and rehabilitators to get these bears back out into the wild where they belong. That's awesome. Uh, I'm just trying, I'm just ink, ink. Well, I call this inking. Um, obviously this is on an iPad I'm digitally, um, but I'm going over my sketch with uh, what I would consider the, the final lines. So I'm trying to, there's so much fur. They're covered in fur. There's so much Does fur that, to draw. I would think as an unskilled illustrator myself, I would think that that would make it easier, but there's not as much stuff to fill in. Oh no, I but feel I guess... like I got to draw all these, like, you know, you got to, you got to show, well, you don't have to actually draw this however you want. But for me, um, I want to um, kind of indicate where that fur is laying and how. So I'm trying to get that mm -hmm. basically down and then I'm going to go back over. Um, luckily, they don't have an extensive color palette. So That's true. coloring would be easier. Is there any benefit to their fur coloration? The, the way that they're Ooh. colored? Oh, that's an interesting thought. And it's not one that I have an immediate answer to. Ooh. So I know that, you know, of course, with a lot of birds, their, their plumage, the color of their feathers, is can be beneficial for camouflage, mm -hmm. depending on what habitat they live in. But opossums, they're, they're kind of an off-white color. And that solid black color, and those aren't two colors that you typically see a lot in hardwood forests. Yeah, I was thinking that because it's like, mm, what's the what's the benefit there? Is there one? That's a that's a question. So, to new law. I don't know. I don't know. I got gotcha. you. I asked you a question. Maybe we'll have to look into that. That's good. Well, that's a good reminder that you know, while while we certainly know a lot about these animals it's also a good exercise and thought to kind of work through things and see if we can figure out the mystery but for now it's a mystery for me a mystery those are always fun it's fun it's fun to have some mystery in your life so i know you've drawn a ton of birds speaking of life yes. i know you've drawn a ton of birds yes i love birds. how many opossums do you think you've drawn um more since I've started at the Wildlife Center because I, I know yeah. I drew an opossum for our tote bag that we had for sale last year, which I gave you I gave you that illustration. And mm -hmm. it's hanging up on my desk right now. I draw I drew another version that I gave to Kelsey because Kelsey, if if anyone in the chat is not aware, loves opossums. More mm -hmm. more than I feel like anyone I've ever met. I would um, agree with that. So I, I had to do I had to give her that one and I think she wants me to draw another one and so I don't know I feel like my frequency of opossum uh, illustrations has increased quite a lot since being at the wildlife center which I'm so, fine with. All right let me ask you let me ask you this question did okay. you draw an opossum before you came to the wildlife center? Uh, yes I feel like I have because I really like them I feel like they're cool they, yeah. I feel like they're one of those animals and I'm, I'm very fond of animals that might not have the best reputation, I guess, in, oh in the public gosh. eye. Absolutely. So for me, I, I came to the center already being fond, fond of them and finding them. Maybe it's, maybe it's that underdog syndrome we're talking about. Yeah. Today. And please, forgive me if I launch into like educator mode, but no, that is it. my job. Do that's it. About, that's going to happen right now. So you, underdogs, that is. The, a great way to describe an opossum. And that's a theme that I really try to work in to education programs that I present that feature opossums because they are, they're the underdogs. If you ask somebody, you know, just anybody, a random person, what's your favorite animal? Very, very few people are gonna say opossum. On the other hand, you would probably hear a lot of Bald eagle, mm -hmm. bear, a humpback whale, a polar bear, something that is really big and traditionally charismatic. Uh, you, you'll, you'll probably never see an opossum on the cover of National Geographic magazine. 
And, and so because they are so underappreciated, because unfortunately they do have some negative stereotypes attached to them. People think that they're dirty, that they carry diseases. People think they're mean and nasty. Well, I mean, any, any little bit of research or any time that you can meet one of our education opossums, you know right away that those stereotypes are unfounded. It was just, they just aren't true. So it's really, really, I think something special to bring an opossum to a program, show people what they're really like, teach them how important they are to their ecological systems as scavengers, as predators, as prey. And I, I always try to end kind of with the same sentiment. And that is that, you know, I say to people, you, you have met an opossum, you know what they're really like now. So my, my hope is that you, the audience member, will take what you have learned and you will become a defender of the underdog, a champion of the little guy. Because opossum, they're the little guys. They don't get the love, but they deserve it. They deserve our respect. They, adore, they deserve our affection. And that's what I really, really push for, is to people become, yeah, champions of the underdogs. Yes. I agree. I I. I have a huge fondness for those animals. I feel like um, Lauren and I talked about that quite a lot uh, when we drew Buttercup. Oh my gosh, yeah. And Lauren, she did a whole program um, that she created called Love for the Unloved. It's perfect. That she presented and a lot of the same themes. Uh, animals that, that don't have a good reputation, a lot of the time those, those reputations are, are founded in myth or misinformation. So that's such a powerful education topic uh, because I know I heard Lauren mention earlier that it's oh now I can't remember I'm paraphrasing that you can't protect something unless you care about it I think that was the gist of it it's wise um, and, and that really resonates with me because I got it I got my start as an educator um, in places like state parks and city parks where I was a park ranger in a major educational skill that park rangers are taught to use is something called interpretation. And interpretation is a method of educating that aims to create an emotional connection between an audience member and the subject at hand. So it's, it's the same concept. When you teach people to care about something, they're much more likely to take ownership of that thing and then protect it, go spread the word, become educators themselves. That's very, that's very interesting. Barb just posted her drawing on the chat <gasps> and I love it. Damn. They look so fuzzy and so cute. I have to see this. Oh, it's so good. That's really good. Barb, I love that. Thank you for sharing. Wow, that's really great. Yeah, that's awesome. And your draw your drawing really came together beautifully, Kayla. Oh thanks. I'm trying to to add some of the the fur color there, even though I know I kind of did that a bit with the shading, but I'm trying to put some more gray, some some steely gray in there. Ooh. I think it captures their personalities pretty great too. I mean th and those pictures are are pretty characteristic of their <laughs> of how they act. Um so for the for everyone's information, the, the photos that Kayla's referencing for, for this sketch are their um, their official ambassador headshots that are on the education animal section of the website. And so those two photos, I took those uh, with my phone inside their enclosures. And I'm not kidding. It those were one each of those photos were one of approximately two hundred <laughs> that I Oh my gosh. 199 of those photos were blurry because opossums are moving. When they are interested in something, they're always on the move. So it was kind of a luck of the draw that I got those. But, but it does, I think it, it captures their personalities a little bit. Lewis is in the back. He's on the left-hand side. He's kind of just hanging out. He's looking. He's, he's curious. He's sitting down. Clark is on the front. He's on the right. You can tell he's kind of on all four feet. He's ready to take his egg and run back into the corner. <laughs> take that egg and run. Yeah. So I see in the chat, Amanda said, Alex, I have a question for you. What's your question, Amanda? 
I'm going to color in these pink toes while you're waiting for your question. Oh, that's lovely. Gosh, I love their little toes. Their little, little hands, little toes. It's also really fun um, to kind of, this sounds weird, but to spy on them. So <laughs> I knew, I told you it was gonna sound weird. So when we travel to offsite programs, they, they travel in a, a carrying crate, um, which have kind of ventilated sides as well as a, a metal a grated door. So we can see in there. And when, when opossums travel, they get some bedding, they get a few towels or a few blankets to kind of snuggle up in. And most times, once opossums get comfortable with being in that crate, they'll just take that as, as an opportunity to go right to sleep. And they snuggle up and they lay on their backs, their mouths kind of open as they're snoozing. And one of my favorite things is to see their little pink hands kind of like twitch in their sleep. I wonder what they're dreaming about. Oh my gosh, stop. It's too much. Uh, okay, so Amanda's question. She said, even if you think you shouldn't have favorites, let's face it, we do. So who has been your most favorite opossum buddy uh -oh. in my nearly four years at the center? No doubt, without a question, that's Bo. Aww. So Bo was an opossum that came to the Wildlife Center in 2017, I think. Um, he was admitted as a, a pretty young opossum. He unfortunately had been suffering from metabolic bone disease. So his limbs were a little bowed. Mm. His, his joints, specifically his hip joints, didn't really fit together the way that they properly should. And that's, that was probably due to genetics, but also um, nutritional intake when he was really, really young. So Bo had some mobility issues and he was deemed an education ambassador pretty quickly. And I loved him so much because he was the very first opossum that I was tasked with raising and training on my own. So there's a there you know there's some nostalgia there for me with that factor, but he was just I, it, it's improper to put human emotions onto animals. That's, right. It just doesn't work that way. But the characteristics and personality traits that I kind of put onto him myself were that he was really tenacious. You know, even though he had all these mobility issues, he would never be wild because he, he couldn't move correctly, he couldn't run correctly or climb trees correctly. Despite that, he was absolutely gung-ho about living life. And one of my favorite stories that always makes me laugh is that one day uh, after he had graduated from living in a crate under my desk to living up in his outdoor enclosure, um, one day, the rehabilitators who were providing his daily care at that point walked up to his enclosure and they noticed that some things were off. They noticed that his door to his enclosure was open. They noticed that a bucket was knocked over. Some water jugs were tipped over. Things were generally in disarray. Uh, and Bo was the culprit. Oh my so gosh. he... Um, so these enclosures, you got to remember that they're designed for each species specifically. So the education of possum enclosures, they have latching doors, um, but on the inside of the enclosures, there is a kind of a plastic like um, barrier that's attached to the wall. That's a little slippery. So they can't climb up and unlatch the door themselves. Somehow Bo overcame the odds oh and he used his pure power <laughs> to climb up to the door. He opened the door himself. I don't know how he knew how to do that. And he just caused chaos. He had a party overnight. And when they came in, they found him sleeping in a bucket. <sighs> so I don't know how he did that, but that just to me really um, characterized Bose. And there he is in the chat. Oh, he was so sweet. They characterized his tenaciousness and he also <laughs> was kind of a nightmare for other staff members <laughs> um, because he was essentially raised by me 
he certainly recognized me. He knew who I was um, and other staff members. I just don't think he, he cared too much to be sweet and pleasant for them. So it used to be when, when people would drop off his food, he would kind of do like a little charge. He would like run at him with an open mouth. Um, which even though opossums are small, they can be really intimidating when they want to be. Oh yeah, that would be intimidating. So he would charge people from across the room and they would of course be scared off and leave. And then, you know, they'd say to me during rounds, Alex, like Bo's being really aggressive. Like, I don't know if you can work with him, see what's going on. So I would go up there and I'd walk in and he'd be the sweetest little angel. He wouldn't, he would just saunter up to me, give me a sniff, see what's going on. Uh, so I know that that was not very convenient for other staff members, but it made me like him even more. That's, that is wonderful. Yeah, Bo was great. And I was very, very sad when it was his time to go. But that's, that's again, that's the life of an opossum. They live fast. They, they unfortunately don't live very long, but they certainly leave an impact on people that get to meet them. Ugh, that's beautiful. I, I am... I am really happy to know Lewis and Clark. Like that's they've they've they're very great too. I'm happy mm-hmm. to have met Bo. Yeah, Lewis and Clark. They are they're about to turn a year old. Uh, well, well, actually, they have probably surpassed that age already. Um, and they came to the wildlife center very young, and usually for opossums, when we are habituating them and, and training them and getting them ready to be education animals. I have noticed that they kind of, they kind of calm down after they reach a year in age. Um, I think that Lewis and Clark came at an interesting time and they have graduated into this time of their lives and being ready for programs at an interesting time because right now we're not doing in-person programs. Oh, that's true. You know, but it's it, it's great that we have the chat, that we have things like this event, social media, that we can share their stories, share everything that, that we love to share about opossums with our friends and followers online. So it, it, it's kind of interesting. And I'll probably, this will be probably a, a, a big time in their lives because they'll be used more and more for programs um, during kind of these interesting times. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I was, I was telling Lauren earlier how much I loved your uh, program the other day. It was so sweet. I, I'm, I'm excited oh to see yeah. more. So those are great. I have really started to love those where we just get animals enrichment because we get to see what they would do on their own. They make their own choices. They do whatever behavior they think is appropriate, and it's fun to watch. Okay, so I have an update um, for all of our friends who are following on the chat and who have helped us reach our donation goals so far. So remember that our, our, our next goal, our next milestone to reach is $2,000. And when we hit $2,000, our next guest will be coming on to the chat. I will leave you. I will leave you with this beautiful drawing Kayla did and our next guest will come up and you'll have new options for what animal you think Kayla should draw next. And of course, we're gonna do another poll. So at this very moment, 11.52 AM, at this moment, we are at $1,920. We're so close. That's amazing. Wow, I didn't realize that we were that close. Our goal is $2,000, which means that's just $80 left. That's all, wow. Have we, and we haven't talked about who our next guest is, but if, if we want to talk about that, um, it might give people an indication of who we might vote for. Yeah. So you may be able to do some deductive reasoning, right? There are three people in outreach that work with animals. You have seen me, you've seen Lauren, you've seen and heard from me. So the next guest will be... Let me see if I can do a drum roll better than Lauren. Nope, I can't. No, that's pretty good. Okay, the next guest is Amanda. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. Amanda Nicholson, our director of outreach. 
So remember that these animals that we're drawing are those that each of us work really closely with. So we have stories and information about them. So you guys know that Amanda works pretty closely with birds like Maggie, the peregrine falcon. She works with animals like Athena, the barred owl. She works with Rosalie, the red-tailed hawk. She works with Hudson, the jeer falcon. So a lot of options there. It's true. I wonder who we will be voting for. I'm very excited. We'll just have to wait and see. But remember, we won't put the poll up until we reach our donation goal, which is so, so, so close. We are so close to hitting that goal. I'm trying to add some, some color around Lewis and Clark because they are pretty monotone. So if you're at home and you're adding some color to your drawing because you uh, kept working at it or whatever, I think giving them a little bit of a background kind of helps them pop out. It helped me kind of give some dimension down here too. Uh, give them give them like they're coming, coming out of the page. <laughs> you're coming to get that hard boiled egg. Coming to get that eggy. I love their sparkly little eyes. They do. They have like a little glint in their eyes. It's just that that spark of excitement looking for the egg, I guess. Just Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love um that they're they're okay, let's see, I know this. Um your pupil is in the center. Your retina is in the back of your eye. What's like the colored part of an eye called? Uh the is it the iris? Maybe. That sounds right. Sure. I'm not sure. I'm not well, sure. Well, what I'm trying to say is that their, their, their eyes look almost totally black mm -hmm. until you get really close and you can see that they're actually like a really dark brown. Oh. Um, but from far away, that makes them look like they have just little shiny marbles for eyes. Maybe I should put some really dark brown in there. just a, just a hint, just a hint of it. I think you have captured their likenesses so well. Good. I'm glad this was, look at this. Look, I'm going to, I'm going to add a little bit. Look at that. Oh no, that no. makes it cuter. No. Oh, my God. Oh. Ah. oh no, that increased, that increased oh, the quality by a thousand. Oh man. Oh my goodness. Wow. Good call. Thanks for, for informing me on that fact, because I feel like that helped a lot. Yeah, they are, they're just, they're just so cute. And that actually is something that's really challenging for me when I'm doing educational programs, because, you know, of course, one of our messages is you should never keep baby wildlife as pets. They belong in the wild. They're better cared for by their wild parents. And it's so hard because I spend so much time talking about how cute they are. Yeah. That's true. It, there's a fine line there, I feel like. But yeah, I guess it's like like many cases when it comes to wildlife, it's better to look than mm -hmm. to touch. Mm -hmm. Observe. <laughs> I can see some comments on the chat. Amanda said, we should make a music video montage of Alex and his opossum children. What would the song be? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, what's that song by the Turtles? I can dance, da, 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 but nobody but you for all my life. Yeah, it'd be like that. But you like spinning yeah. around with opossums. <laughs> yeah, they would hate that. <laughs> <laughs> but just very upset and distressed. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, oh my gosh. Well, while we're waiting to get that last little bit to hit that goal. I'm going to show Edie again. I don't know. Did you see Edie when I was done? Um, I don't think I saw the final product. Oh, there she is. Wow. That looks like it could be on an Autobahn poster. Yes. The dream. And, you know, I was trying to follow along. I did. I'll share. I don't even know if it's worth sharing. Yes, I, it is. But, well, because it's not done. I just, well, well, let's see. Well, this is a good question. Will these completed drawings, will we have them like up anywhere? Or is this a kind of thing where you had to have been here to see it? I, I think the plan is I'm going to give you the high resolution images so people could download them if they wanted to. Oh, yeah. That's kind of like what we did for our Earth Day. It's yeah. Like later on, once it was all done, we put some of the stuff up. Yeah. And I think that's fun. And people, you know, and feel free to kind of use those for these for reference if you wanted to draw later. Like, I think that that would be valuable. 
whatever whatever your heart desires. Yeah, that would be great for me because I I was I was trying to multitask and listen in and watch and work the moderate discussion and do emails behind the scene. Ooh, that's so I only got down to Edie's um, anklets. So she has no feet right now. So once feet. those once those photos we get, once we get the drawings posted later on, I'll definitely complete my drawing and share it online. Please do. To the dismay of everyone. <laughs> the dismay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, every I I guarantee you everyone wants to see. I want to see everyone's art because everyone is so talented. Like ta- it's I feel like people look at other people's art and maybe feel like they can never get there, but it's really just a matter of practice. And I think mm-hmm. everyone's art is valuable. Everything that you put to paper has immense value because you made it. Like it would not exist if you didn't exist. Be, creativity is, I think it's so important to mental health. It's so important for kind of filling out that area of your life. But I'm creative in anything like drawing, playing music, singing turtle songs badly, any kind of creativeness. I think that was great. I can't sing. So to me, I was like, wow. Do you, do you spend time drawing like outside of work? Because I know you do illustrations for some other organizations, but do you ever draw in your spare time just for fun? I do. Um, I feel like I I draw a lot of birds. Um, I draw a lot of Dungeons and Dragons stuff. If anybody in the chat plays Dungeons and Dragons, that's my hobby. Nice. Um, so yeah, all kinds of stuff. I don't think that I would be truly happy if I wasn't creating um, every day. And I think that, I think that it even, I I think that even if you feel like you can't create, creation comes from a lot of different places and in a lot of different ways. Like Lauren mentioned embroidering earlier, that's creativity. Mm -hmm. Uh, baking is being creative. That's creating something. Um, baking blows my mind. That's like creation, creativity and science. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not my strong suit. Me either. I, I can hard boil an egg, so I'm good. Then you could paint that egg if you wanted to, Alex. I could paint the egg. <laughs> well, so I like to play guitar very much. I've, I've been playing for probably, uh, what year is it? Uh, about 10 years at this point. And sometimes when I sit down to play, I'm, I'm very serious. I have a practice session. I do drills. I try to learn things, specific things. Other times, which I find is now these days, kind of more often than not, I kind of just noodle around. I kind of just like, I just want to make noise. I just want to make up melodies and just play just to have fun. And that kind of fulfills that creative side for me. That's really nice. And it's like, a, it, you, you need that. You need that for recharging. Mental health is important. Absolutely. And I don't know about everybody else, but I'm finding myself with a lot more time indoors these days. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. it's a good time to pick up art as a hobby and draw 50 opossums and then you know what by the end of it you're gonna be a master a master of drawing opossums <laughs> is that a promise do i have your guarantee yes if you draw 50 opossums you're gonna be better at drawing opossums than me because i have definitely drawn less than 10 in my life so what? yeah no that can't be true yes it's true i'm not oh wow yeah so i mean If you draw 50 of them, you're going to be so practiced that you are going to just be the opossum master. Wow. That that, that is an achievable goal for everyone. I see lots of cool comments. The chat's really active right now. I, I love that you guys are hanging out with us and chatting with us. So I see some people are talking about how much my song was destroying their computer speakers <gasps> that's false know. it was it was enhancing <laughs> so here's some I see some things from jack in virginia it says i'll bake you something alex i love it Ooh, well i might just take you up on that <laughs> i'm accepting all baking donations we have uh at the wildlife center there is a, a lovely woman who every week will drop off some baked goods for the staff um, their cookies, their brownies, their other sugary treats. And that has become such a pivotal part of my life at the Wildlife Center. 
just being there for that weekly drop off. And it is so uplifting. So baking can change the world. It can. It, it, it just that, that that's a, been a big thing on my mind, which is kind of, this is a sidebar sidebar. Um, but we're, we're all just need to give each other a little help. And if that is baking someone a treat and help and making their day, it can't draw them a picture. Maybe if you drew an opossum today, maybe you can give that to someone and you're going to make their day. Um, give it to me, take a picture of it and send it to me and I'll make a collage. <gasps> and I'm not kidding. I'll I'll like make a collage and hang it up somewhere. That, I mean, you could hang it up at your desk. You've already started one. Yes, I have. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I will definitely give you this one. We'll, we'll print this one off for you. Um, um <laughs> Marley, I'm going to interrupt. Sorry. Marley in the chat said, Alex, how many times do you think you've had brownies for breakfast at the wildlife center? I, I don't have enough fingers and toes to count that number. That's wow. So you basically, that means you are a breakfast brownie expert. Any, any food is breakfast food. If you ask me. Oh yeah. If you eat it at the appropriate time. Yeah. And, and you <laughs> yeah. believe it's breakfast food. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I am. So let's see. We are still, as far as I know, we're still trying to hit our two thousand dollar donation goal to bring on our next guest, Amanda. With that next guest, we'll have some more options for drawings that Kayla will do for us live during our stream. So. I, I don't know if we have an updated number for you guys at this very exact moment or not. I don't think we do, but we are very close. Um, we were going to take a small break for lunch anyway. So I yeah. think maybe let's just take a break so I can get up and stretch my legs. And then we'll come back to the chat and maybe see where we're at. And if we've hit that goal, Amanda and I can come back on and we can get to get to getting, as Lauren would say. Get to getting. That's the phrase of the day for us. I think that's a great idea. So people can use this break as a chance to grab something to eat, maybe get a fresh set of pencils or pens or paper or whatever else. Um, and definitely keep an eye on the chat. Even while we're away, you'll see um, that little graphic of Rowan that's blinking at you. That's how you know that your video is working and that we are live. We're just on a break. So keep an eye on the chat. Um, so when we do hit that goal, uh, we can come back and, and kind of take it to the next phase if we hit the goal. That's the key. Take it to the next level. That's right. And you know that it's going to be A, awesome, and B, a bird, because it's Amanda. And I'm very excited about this because I want to draw another bird. I got to say, the results of the polls have kind of surprised me this morning. Me too. So I'm interested to see what the result of our final polls are. I be. actually have... A no idea because yeah because i i know what i would have expected but now i have no idea and that's exciting it is it's all very exciting all right that's the beauty of doing live stuff with you guys is that we're we're live too you are watching live we are live we don't know what's going to happen just like you guys don't know well we kind of have an idea what's going to happen and yeah, we know the parameters but still it's <laughs> a surprise um so let's go ahead and um let's take a break and let's say that we plan to check in again on the chat with everybody at 1245. How does that sound? That sounds great. So we will, I'll, I'll probably be hanging out in chat while I, while I lunch. So yeah. let's hang yeah, out I'll be there, there too. Yeah. and we'll, we'll get to getting. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you really love seeing Lewis and Clark come to life. Just like I did. Um, grab, take a break, get up, get something to eat, come back with some more drawing supplies. Be sure to check in on the chat with us and we'll kind of have our next um, thing happen potentially at 1245. Sounds great. Bye everyone. See you soon. Bye guys.